So um, I went to bed last night and I realized I made a mistake in one of the calculations that I was talking about in the video about uh, the J&J &J vaccine. And while the, um, the mistake in the calculation didn't change the um, conclusion or the point of the discussion, uh, it serves as a great opportunity to do two things, which is obviously first and foremost, correct the mistake, but uh, also uh, show the math behind how one arrives at all the stuff I was talking about, because I realized after the fact, what I intended to be about a two minute video is probably closer to 10 minutes. And I basically rattle off a bunch of stuff. So um, maybe we use this as a, uh, an opportunity this morning to talk a little bit about that stuff. So I, I pulled out the spreadsheet that I did all this stuff in yesterday. Um, and also uh, simplified it a little bit because uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. So let's see. Da, da, da. Okay. This should be it. Okay. So you should all be looking at a spreadsheet now. And I want to walk you through all of the calculations we talked about. Uh, first thing I want to point out is just general spreadsheet uh, hygiene, which is to say that inputted numbers are always blue. So that means a number that you've entered, we call that hard-coded numbers, are blue. And anything that you've calculated is black. Um, for what it's worth, anytime you import numbers from other spreadsheets or sheets within a spreadsheet, they should be green. And again, for most people, that's a totally irrelevant thing. But if you're ever looking at somebody's spreadsheet, that's a very quick way to orient yourself. So in uh, this column over here, we have all of the data for people who received the vaccine in the J&J &J trial. And over here, you have the people who got the placebo. And the first thing you'll notice is, as I said, there's about 20,000 people in each group. Um, and then the first uh, number here we report is the total number of COVID cases in each group. And the way you calculate absolute risk is you take this number divided by this number, and that gives you this number. So if you click on this, you can see this number divided by that number there. So, um, 2.6%, right, 509 over that is the absolute risk. And similarly, when you divide this number by this number, you get 0.89%. Now, the relative risk reduction is calculated by looking at the difference of these two over the denominator, or stated another way, um, let's just show you the math, right? It's the placebo's effect minus um, the vaccine effect over the placebo effect. So th it's basically saying this is 66% better than this. And that was the number, as I noted, that got reported for all of the vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna uh, being closer to the mid 90s. It's the absolute risk reduction, however, that I think is the more important number. And I'm surprised that that number did not get reported more. And the absolute risk reduction is calculated by simply subtracting this from this. So when you click on this, you'll see that it's uh, the uh, placebo's risk minus the risk of the treatment group. And that's actually a bigger number than you saw in the other vaccines, actually suggesting that J&J &J is a more effective vaccine, at least in this population. And again, I think it's a little too soon to actually say one vaccine is more effective than the other, because I think that the population upon which this was tested uh, was probably more at risk than that of the others. Okay, and then we get to this NNT calculation, and the NNT, or the number needed to treat, is the reciprocal of absolute risk reduction, which is just a math way of saying one divided by the absolute risk reduction is the NNT. So if the NNT were 1%, the number needed to treat would be 100. If the uh, ARR was 50%, the NNT would be two people. So in this case, one divided by that number is 58. So you need, you need to give 58 people the vaccine to prevent one case of COVID over the duration of this trial. By the way, that's another point that doesn't get mentioned enough. These trials were relatively short, probably short compared to the duration of immunity here. So as um, the data for these trials gets extended, you generally see those NNTs go down, meaning 
it looks like the vaccines get better over time because you have more time to develop the disproportionate number of cases between placebo and treatment group. Okay, so here's where I screwed up yesterday. Let's just go through this. Um, overall number of severe critical cases was 19 in the um, uh, vaccine group and 80 in the placebo. Here's where I punted. When I calculated the absolute risk, I punched the 19. I, I divided 19 by total cases carelessly and 80 by total cases carelessly and got an elevated AR, absolute risk. Um, obviously here I've corrected that. This number is correctly shown as the uh, overall number, number of severe critical cases by the total number of participants, not cases. Okay, makes sense. Same thing is done over here. Again, the math does not change. The delta between those has become the ARR and the reciprocal of those is the number needed to treat. So now the question, now the, the issue is if you want to prevent a very severe critical infection, you have to treat 321 people. And when you go down to hospitalization requiring ICU admission, it was two participants versus 29 participants. And that gave you an absolute risk reduction of 0.14%. And again, the reciprocal of that is 729. And I believe yesterday I had numbers in the 20s here because I had done the same stupid mistake here, which was I had divided this by the total number of cases as opposed to the uh, total number of participants. Okay, and here's the point that doesn't change from yesterday, which was really the whole point of the post. All of this was, was basically prologue to what I wanted to say, which is in the case of the vaccine, there were zero deaths. In the case of the placebo, there were seven deaths. So that's an absolute risk of 0.04%. That's a rate of death of 358 per million. If you keep in mind that 6.9 million people have been vaccinated at the time of the vaccine cessation, that means the rate of death per 6.9 million people is 2,471. And the point I was trying to make was we need to contrast that against the rate of death in the complication group i.e. the treatment group, which is one. So one death in the 6.9 million people who received the vaccine versus 2,471 deaths saved uh, by giving the vaccine. And my argument, of course, is we need to be a little bit more rational in how we do this. I won't go on into that anymore because I made that point yesterday. Basically today, I wanted to uh, apologize for screwing up uh, the math here and um, make sure people could actually see the spreadsheet so that um, they can understand this. And again, I hope this is a helpful exercise because I just don't think you can overstate the importance of being able to understand relative um, risk reduction and absolute risk reduction in not just vaccine trials, but all pharma trials, nutritional interventions, anything um, that involves an, uh, an intervention, this type of uh, stuff is going to be helpful. So with that said, I apologize for any confusion I've created, um, and I hope that I've made up for it by at least showing you how the calculations were done.